Hi, my name is Ian Kilori. I'm here at the Crafts Council and I'm an art designer based in Northwest London. Um, and today I'm going to talk about how my uh, upbringing, my background, um, and my personal experiences um, has played a huge part in my practice, but also how does it inform my work and the work that I create today. I think anyone trying to sort of you know, develop the confidence in the voice and the making, I think my kind of first tip would be to be proud of your story um, and your upbringing, your culture, because you know, we're in a space where design, we, people churn out design every day, every minute, every hour, internationally, and you will find some designs quite similar. But I think what makes you unique and your story special is that it's, it's you, there's only one of you. So use that to your advantage and use that, you know, within your work because everyone has their own story. And we all see things differently, you know, through our, our own lens. That's quite special um, about any kind of creative. So use that to your advantage and tell stories within your work. Um, and don't be afraid to kind of, you know, be, be vulnerable in your work or tell stories that are quite personal to you. You have the power to share and the power to, you know, keep that information for yourself. The work that I create is, is, yeah, is centered around you and I think that's always been at the forefront, but I think it's just nice to kind of see how contagious this theme of joy is. Um, because I think when you look at my work, the first thing you do is that you, is that you smile. I saw my family, you know, celebrating joy through the use of performance and, you know, music, but also fabrics, you know, it was a huge part. Whenever they wore their like, traditional Nigerian clothes, I can always sent a sense, I felt a sense of kind of empowerment, you know, like control. Um, for me, it always kind of felt like super inspiring to kind of see them be really kind of joyful and um, proud of their culture. Um, I think sometimes I felt a bit jealous of that kind of pride they had. Um, so I think for me, I wanted to try and sort of mimic that or sort of like recreate that, you know, through my lens as a, you know, a young Nigerian British living in London. Um, and what does that look like? How, how do I shape that? What, you know, what, in what way does that kind of come across in my work? And I think, you know, pattern and colours of storytelling were the kind of three components for me that, you know, that gave me, you know, sort of when we're young, those kind of early play memories and experiences are so pivotal for our, our growth and for how we see the world and how we view things and you know and also shapes what we want to be you know like doctors artists you know engineers scientists whatever we want to be so i think i try to let adults know or anyone know that you know we can still play we can still dream um i think those are themes i'm going to try to you know allow us to just keep playing we can always play for, we can play forever I, I love actually um spending time with my little niece and actually you know collaborating with her that's when, when I'm also kind of most free and most vulnerable and not worried about making any mistakes and just, you know, enjoying myself. But also, she might correct me and tell me this is the right way of doing something. And I don't really want to correct her because if that's what she thinks is the right way to do you know, to sketch or then, that, then that's fine. But I think, I think having an opinion, like also taking criticism is something we all need to kind of exercise a lot more and not being offended by taking criticism or or someone having it, because not everyone will like your design or like your pavilion or like your installation. I think when I was, when I started designing, I always sort of, you know, was trying to find perfection or find perfection in design. I'm like, okay, this is a perfect chair and that, that's the final kind of product. Um, but I think it's kind of okay to kind of make mistakes along the way. It's okay to not have things in the first year or second year, it took me 10 years you know, to kind of, you know, build my practice and find, you know, sort of find, like, I don't know, find my style. People always ask me, how did you find your style? It's like, years of training, years of, you know, like making mistakes, years of, you know, trial, trying things, like new things, like, you know, just doing things differently, but it won't come in year one, it won't come overnight, it takes years. Each year your style will evolve and change. And I think you don't, you will know when it feels, when you find, when you found your style and found what you what you care about. Um, but that, that takes time, you know? So you just got to kind of trust the journey and, and, you know, allow room for mistakes, allow room for imperfection, because there isn't anything, like perfection doesn't, it doesn't exist. It's not out there. I, I, I haven't found it. So I find beauty in imperfection. And that's probably the reason why I'm still here. Because I embrace, my imperfections. I think, especially adults and parents, you know, parents, siblings, you know, if you've got young 
sisters or brothers or, or anyone you mentor, I think it's really important that you, you, you really do nurture that talent and nurture that, you know, their creativity because they are the future. You know, like everything we, around us is, is design, is craft. You know, our, func like our world functions around these things. So it's really important to kind of, you know, to, to really sort of, you know, nurture and, and, and encourage um, young creative people because they are, they are the future. Um, you know, future makers, future designers, artists, architects.